The president wants to spy on 200 million Americans without a warrant. Has he read this document, which he was sworn to uphold? Now, I will not have you libel Abraham Lincoln. I don't understand the problem with registering guns. We register cars. Mark Levine brings you the news the government doesn't want you to know. Today, an explosive story about connections between white supremacists and Islamic terrorists. When there's a conflict between Scalia's conservative values and the Constitution of the United States, he throws away the Constitution. When we do have secret prisons, that is not what America is all about. Let's go to Mark in five, four, three, two. The president wants. Good evening, America. Welcome to the Inside Scoop. In about 11 hours, voters will begin going to the polls in Virginia and casting their ballots in person. Over the rest of the next uh, 24 hours or so, 100 plus a million Americans will have voted until 24 hours from now. The polls will begin to close in Virginia and something magical will have happened. The American people will have come out and will have chosen their leaders. There's something really wonderful about Election Day, at least for me, because it shows that we can actually deal with our differences without violence, even though they're very strong differences. For example, let's say you don't like Social Security or Medicare. You're going to cast your vote for Mitt Romney. And you very much believe that Social Security and Medicare are wrong, you'll cast your vote. If you happen to like Social Security and Medicare, you think those are good things, you're going to cast your vote for Barack Obama. These are differences that people can have very strong arguments about, but people will cast their votes tomorrow and the American people will be heard. This and, of course, many, many other issues. There is, however, a time when democracy is threatened. And the only time it's threatened, other than by external forces and war, is when people try to prevent other people from voting. My guests today have experience in that, and they, uh, they're going to tell you about it. It's happening right here in Virginia, right here in Fairfax County. Uh, to my far left, uh, to your right on the screen, is Cesar Del Aguila. He is the chair of the Fairfax Democratic uh, Committee. Uh, and sitting next to him, sitting to my left, is Bettina Lawton. She's the communications chief for the Fairfax Democrats. Thank you very much for coming on Thank the show you. tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Again, I love Election Day. I, I realize that today, Election Day is almost like Election Two Weeks, because many people have voted early in Virginia right. and That's across right. the nation. But still, there's something wonderful. Uh, I actually am going to vote tomorrow, because I like going in there, yeah, right. and going in the booth right. and, and yeah. doing it the, the old-fashioned way. Uh, but however you vote, uh, we have to protect people's right to vote. Absolutely. And Cesar, you were t telling me uh, when we discussed prior to the broadcast that in Fairfax, there was a threat to our vote, a threat so strong that I guess it was you decided to file a lawsuit. Tell me about uh, that. We did. Well, as the county uh, chair, um, if I can step back Please a little do. bit. Yeah. So uh, this this euphemism, you know, voter fraud or, or you know, protecting the vote, it actually stems from a lot of different uh, avenues, and people have been convinced that there is somehow widespread voter fraud, meaning people going from precinct to precinct in some collective collaborative effort to uh, skew the voting results one way or another. I have asked for, um, I've even put out a Mitt Romney $10,000 bet. Show us a case where an actual case has been tried and convicted. Someone went to the polls claiming there's someone else committing voter fraud. I am waiting. My One of the reasons why people don't do that is uh, in most states, it's, and I, it's just a five-year felony. Uh, it's if, absolutely if, if you vote law. in someone absolutely. else's name, if you vote uh, for some, and, and you're not allowed to vote, that's five years in prison. Absolutely. I'm a firm believer of the right to vote, but very few people are going to risk five years in prison hey, don't to vote do twice. It. Don't do of it. Of course you not. You shouldn't do it. Of course you shouldn't do Who's it. Who's doing it? I don't I know. I don't know anyone <laughs> that, that's, so that, that's, that's doing that's it. That's where it starts. So there's been this effort by some other groups to convince certain people that somehow there's a lot of nasty things going on out there. Having said that, in, in Fairfax County, because Fairfax County is, we represent one in seven votes in the Commonwealth. You're the largest county, you're the largest Absolutely. jurisdiction in Virginia. Uh, we're it. And here's the other factor. We're the most diverse county. A lot of Hispanics, a lot of Koreans, a lot of Vietnamese, Chinese, Arabic. African we, we got it all. We got, but that's our strength, too. There are some that fear that. Well, we believe, as Democrats, you're, if you're allowed to vote, if you're a citizen, your voice needs to be heard, even if that voice speaks a different language. 
So what's going on here? I mean, people uh, have already been doing early voting. We talked right. about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, have you witnessed, or do you know people who have witnessed people trying to stop Absolutely. other people from so going to the polls? Give me some day, examples. Little day in the life. Little day right. in the life. Um, it's only certain people, by the way. I, I think you all would be okay <laughs> going it's to the polls. It's brown people. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's brown people. So the, it, certain brown people have been targeted. There are so people mostly out Latinos there. or Latinos and African Americans. It's African -Americans, Asians, African -Americans. African -Americans. It's, it's, it, Again, mm -hmm. it's a certain segment. Yeah. People are out there with little video recordings, taking pictures, shouting, "I'm recording you. I'm going to report you." Basically, harassing our folks going to the polls. That is downright intimidation. Now, Bettina, you actually wrote a letter to the editor of the Washington yes, Post uh, about this. Tell me uh, what, what led you to write that letter and what you said in it. They had an article in the Washington Post about training in Virginia for election officers. And they were down, they were interviewing people down in the Norfolk area. And I was absolutely taken by this comment made by the trainer who said, well, you know, we're going to tell people to vote provisional, even though the chance of a provisional ballot being counted is nil. Okay, back, back, back up, so, back up. So, back up to a provisional. Well, well, yeah, first of all, we have to explain to people what a provisional ballot is. Right. So, so uh, basically, you can vote normally, which is good. You go in, your vote's counted, mm -hmm. and life is good. Life is life happy. Life is happy. Uh, if you have some serious reason why, you should, why they, they don't trust your vote, you can vote provisionally, and then they examine it, and about 80% of those are thrown out. Absolutely. Right? So Absolutely. give me an example. So, so, you have a so, so you have a chance to vote if it's provisional, but you have a certainty of voting if it's not right. And here's where it hits hardest. Right. It's the diversity. It's the, that crowd, the ethnic crowd, uh, whether it's Hispanics, Koreans, Asians. You, you mistranspose first name, surname, middle name, Shin Chur, Kim. Asian Shin, last names oh my are God. said okay. first. All the time. And, and, right. and so in those cases, those folks are directed to vote a provisional right. ballot. Someone whose last name is Kim would, would say Kim Song instead of Song Kim. Right. Because right. that's the way Or there's an additional name in right. there. Right. And, oh, you're not who you say you are. Oh, well, we'll check it out later, vote a provisional. Right. And if you vote provisionally, it's unlikely your vote will be counted. Well, the problem with voting provisionally is that the burden falls on the voter. Right. So you come in on Tuesday. You have taken time off from work to come in. You st stand in line. If you're a morning voter, it's going to be long lines tomorrow. You have taken those times, you've to vote, and now you're not done. If it's an identification issue, like what's your name, what do you have, do you have the right paperwork, you have until Friday at noon, and you have to go back with your identification. And you can't go back to your precinct, you have to no. find the specific location right. to You have do to go that. to the Board of Elections, right. and you've got to get them your identification information that says, see, I'm the legitimate voter. I'm, you, you should so, count it. So let's say there's someone whose name is Kim Song. Uh, it's a, Kim is a very common Korean-American right. uh, last name. Uh, and uh, they put the last name first. That's the tradition. And let's say that your driver license says Kim Song, but your voter registration says Song Kim. Mm -hmm. You might be challenged and right. told you can't vote. Right. Now, now, who would challenge you? Would it be the election officials? Are they the, they're the ones, I guess, who are legally allowed to challenge you. So you have you. the poll book, right? right? So the poll book is where you're checked in. Okay. So, here's something else that's happened. I mean, Sometimes, because if Kim Song and Song Kim both reside at the same address, it's likely to be the same person. Right. right. Or they check off the wrong person as having voted, and when the other person comes in to vote, no, you've already voted. Right. We've made a mistake. Okay, so, so tell me what you have seen happen in early voting that, that concerned you so much to file your lawsuit. Absolutely. So this was part of it. Um, we, uh, as we were sending folks through the election uh, officer training, some things were coming out that we were being told that our folks needed to be behind the table, quiet, seated. Okay, who are, who are our folks? Spell, spell this out. These are, these are the, the Democratic Party, Fairfax County Democrats, we certify and authorize certain people to be in the polls. As and poll what's watchers. the purpose of having people in the polls? Again, protecting the vote, making sure the people that can vote do vote. Uh, uh, basically, so if you help. have a voter who has a mix-up in a name, they got the name wrong, or maybe they 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 spelled S O N G in one place and S E U N G in right. another place. They're sent from this table over to the chief's table, and, 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 and suddenly they're turned away or told, "Hey, you're going to have to take a provisional ballot." Your folks can step in and protect that person's right. Absolutely, we can. We can. We mm -hmm. can be there. They can, you know, certainly get our our you know help. Right. And and basically, we can make sure that. By the way, when you cast that provisional ballot, it's a 30-step process. 
So much better to cast a regular ballot. Yes, so you and, and they can get thrown out on any technicality. Oh, you didn't fill out the middle initial, or just whatever it is. That's why 80% of them get dumped. Okay. So now what we have won in court as of Friday is the ability to be able to move freely, not impede with the voting process, mind you. Not to advocate, not to persuade, no. not to wear any campaign. No. So no. what we've this been doing for 10 years. This is all about persuading people, people to vote, not telling right. them who to vote. Absolutely, right. absolutely. And, that's, and we don't care who you are. We want you to vote. So uh, let me go back to you, Bettina. You were saying that there was training in Norfolk. There was training in Norfolk where they were saying, if you don't have the right ID, we tell everybody, you just go into this line and you're going to have to vote provisional. And who was telling people this? The election officers who were doing the training. So now, the election officers, that's a fancy word for those usually kindly, usually elderly people. And when right. I go to vote, I, they're not always elderly. They're not always kindly. Usually they are. Right. But uh, the people that when I go in and they say, what's your name? What's right. your address? You know, give me your voter registration card. Exactly. They sign you up. Those are election officers. Those are election officers. The Board of Election Fairfax County Board of Election as well as the State Board of Election. In this case, they were down in Norfolk, so it was the State Board. Mm -hmm. The fellow was saying to the reporter, we're, we are telling them, you don't have the ID, there's a problem, you automatically you need to go vote provisional, even though your chances of your vote being counted are nil. But that's not Virginia law. It's not Virginia exactly. law. And that was, when I read that, I was like, well, this is stupid. And one of the things that we had also heard from the training is that they were being told, the election officers were being told, and it's part of their training, that if it happened, you couldn't say, why don't you go home and get your ID? Now, most polling places, and what I said in my letter to the, sure, to the Post was, you, you could say you have, right the, you have the wrong ID, you know, uh, maybe they spelled the name right on your driver's license and right. not on your, school, your student ID, they misspelled yeah. your name. Right. Uh, rather than have a problem, go home, get the right Just ID. Just go home and get it. Right. But they were being told you can't say that. You now, can't make that suggestion. Them the not board of election. The, the board of, now the state board of election. Who appoints them? Uh, well, the governor appoint, the initially governor of appoints Virginia. them. Yes. So the governor of Virginia, Virginia uh, uh, McConnell, McDon Mc McDonald, McDonald, Bob McDonald, Bob McDonald, McDonald. McDonald put, appointed a board that was telling local election officials, do not let people, do not tell people they can go home and get the right ID. Right. Just have them vote provisionally, and their vote will probably be so thrown keep, out. Keep keep that line moving. Just move them on over. Yeah. Separate them from everybody else. Just move them over. And this was reported in the Washington Post. And this was in the Post. And we, we took this to court, by This is why we went to court. When okay. we went before the judge. Tell you what, we have yeah. to take a break. Oh, so, okay. so I, I, we're going to have to hold on until, <laughs> until we we'll we'll, we'll, we'll have some suspense here because yeah. I want to hear what happened before the judge. Yeah. If you know a story of someone that's been denied the right to vote, maybe you've been denied the right to vote, or just harassed, or in any way prevented from voting, call in. Let us know what you think. Let's know what happened to you. 571-749-1166. At the Inside Scoop, we're committed that everyone gets the right to vote. We'll be right back after this. Will you be prevented from voting in the November presidential election? Virginia enacted a new voter ID law in May. It expands the types of identification voters can bring to the polls. But if you don't bring one of them, you can only cast a provisional ballot. Then it gets harder because you must get your ID by noon on the third day after the election to your local election office for your vote to be valid. You can avoid that by bringing a current utility bill, a bank statement, a government check, or your paycheck, but each must have your printed name and address. You can also bring a valid employee photo ID, a driver's license, or a photo ID from the Department of Motor Vehicles. Virginia will play a major role in deciding the presidential election. Make sure your vote counts. ¿Se le complicará votar en las elecciones presidenciales de noviembre? En mayo, Virginia aprobó una nueva ley de identificación electoral, la cual amplía los tipos de identificación que los votantes pueden traer a las urnas electorales. Estas son una factura de servicios públicos, un estado de cuenta del banco, un cheque del gobierno o su cheque de pago. Cada una debe de tener su nombre impreso y la dirección. También puede traer una identificación válida con fotografía, una licencia de conducir o una identificación con fotografía del departamento 
departamento de motores y vehículos. Si usted no trae ninguna de ellas, su voto será solamente provisional y se le dificultará más después porque usted debería presentar su identificación máximo hasta el mediodía del tercer día de realizarse las elecciones. Virginia jugará un papel importante en decidir la elección presidencial. Asegúrese de que su voto cuente. Tomorrow, of course, is election day, and it will be your opportunity to go to the polls and say who you want to lead your country, to be president of the United States. There's, of course, in Virginia, there's a Senate race, there are local races, there are constitutional amendments, there's a lot of important things going on. However you decide to vote, I come on this show and I talk about politics and policies all the time, but that's not the purpose of tonight's show. Tonight's the night before the election. I hope by now you've decided who you're going to vote for. The question for tonight's show is, will you be allowed to vote? Now, I would hope that all Americans, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Green Party and Tea Party, would all agree that your right to vote is sacrosanct. But there is a group in uh, this country, it's a, called True Vote, or True the Vote. True, yeah. True the Vote, it's a very unusual group, but I've seen some of their clips online, where they're actively trying to prevent other citizens from voting and apparently some of that may be happening right here in Virginia. My guests are Cesar Adel Aguilar. He is the chair of the Fairfax Democratic Party. That's right. And sitting next to him is Bettina Lawton, who of course hosts Inside Scoop Virginia. Mm -hmm. I'm taking over her spot today. Uh, it's the night before the election. I'm, I'm, I'm re reclaiming my Inside Scoop label. That's uh, right. She's also the communications chief for the Fairfax Democrats. So Cesar, yes, uh, before we get to the specifics of your lawsuit, tell me about True the Vote. Who are they? What are they doing? Yeah, I. I said early on, there's a group of people that feel that uh, the vote, the integrity is being attacked. And um, how do I say this delicately? They tend to you be... You don't have to be delicate. Okay, they, they tend to be uh, white fox people. Okay. And the reason is because they are being fed information that is, quite frankly, not true. Yeah. And again, I would ask them, do your research, find a single case in Virginia where there has been a conviction on voter in -person fraud. voting fraud. It, it does not happen. Right. No, it and, doesn't and happen across the nation. That's actually. right. So uh, what I is mean, it that they're throwing we're... away? I just read they threw away 100 votes in Ohio because people uh, were voting in the wrong precinct. Right. Uh, and that's the, the election official throwing away 100 votes, right. and yet they can't find one vote of, right. of in-person election right. fraud. Uh, that's but, our okay, point. So, so these that's people are misguided. There are lots of misguided people in America. Mm -hmm. They're crazy people in yeah. America. What are they doing to disrupt the, the, the voting well, process? Well, they're walking up to specific people, harassing specific people. Again, they, they're either they're a minority group. So, so let's be frank. What they're trying to do is they're trying to say, you're not an American citizen. You have Bingo. no right to Bingo, exactly. They're saying, aha, your last name is Del Aguilar. Uh, or, or, Del Aguilar yeah. doesn't sound like oh, Smith yeah. or Jones yeah. Brown. <laughs> right, right, right. So, um, yeah. you know, that you weren't born in Mexico. That's right, or because like that. the president is, uh, in their mind, Kenyan born. <laughs> so right. it comes from, right. again, I don't, they say we play the race card. Well, we do that only when you are a racist. And that's where some of this comes from. So, so they are stopping people that don't look of their idea of America. They're questioning them, they're recording them, they're shouting out, I'm reporting you. I mean, just, it's now, harassment. Now, how do you have evidence of this, Cesar? Do you have pictures of people come to you? How do you know uh, Oh, this? our members have been at the polls since day one, early absentee in-person voting, and we have this documented, we've called the police. Well, I was going to say, if someone tries to stop you from voting, just like that, Absolutely. You call the police? Absolutely. 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 Have we arrested any of these people? I hope so. Well, let me tell you, you can, you can talk to the Fairfax County police. They're getting calls from our folks. By the way, we have people there to make sure people are not harassed. That's we don't fair. want to engage anyone. You know, it's, right. it's heated out there, so okay. just call the police. So, so if someone comes up to a voter watching this show right now, uh, who tries to vote and says, hey, what's your last name, or where are you from, or where are you born? And can you, I say it in Spanish? You can say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> say thank you and God bless you. Keep walking by. Just and and as Cesar has said, when people do that to him and start taking his picture, he always tries to smile. Have they done that to you? So he looks Person? good. I live in Herndon. We have a history of this stuff. <laughs> so mean, really, just to give, me, give our viewers a chance. I mean, give me an example of what someone has done to you. Oh, my God. I was accused of not living in the town of Herndon. 
How did it happen? You're just I was I was setting up uh, for the town council election, mm -hmm. um, and a gentleman accused me of or less that. gentleman. Well, I, I borrowed a friend's truck, and I was setting up with the tables ah, and things like truck. that. Right, it didn't have yeah. the town sticker, and I explained to him, sir, no, I, I couldn't fit all this stuff in my Jaguars. So, and, and, and he accused me of not living where I did. So I pulled out my driver's license. I said, sir, I live right there fortnightly. Here's my address. He goes, I don't care what your license says. You people forge documents all the time. Swear to God. I oh, swear I, to God. I believe you. I'm just so I, the so when audacity I, of I, I, a I, I said, you people. And his wife, God bless her, she stepped in and said, he didn't mean that. And I, and I'm I, quite I, sure he meant that. Yeah. yeah. But it's nice to know that she didn't mean but, that. But, you know, cooler heads prevailed. But that happens a lot. Okay. So mm -hmm. there are people, Democratic Party, and only Republicans as well, mm -hmm. hopefully, that are protecting people's right to vote and not trying to prevent people from voting. Uh, and you, you're sending a crew in, I guess, to every poll, every precinct in so Fairfax? The, 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 the more diverse precincts have okay. attorneys inside. Okay. Uh, we have election officers inside. We have poll watchers by the campaigns. So why did you have to file a lawsuit? Because the instructions that these folks were being given were um, not bound, uh, not supported or validated by any state laws. So instructions that your poll watchers were being given by election officials trained by the right. State Board of Election that right. you were talking about. And, and when we went to court, everyone was, oh, well, no, we didn't say that. We didn't well, say let's that. Back we didn't up. say that. So, so you want to go in and simply ensure the integrity of the process and protect people's right to vote. And we want to give choice. We're about choice. You have a choice. If there's an issue and you can go home and get the proper ID, please go do it. Because once you vote provisional, you you're can't done. Then vote yeah, you're, you're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. If you vote provisional, you can't go home and get your ID and, and vote regular. Your vote's cast, you're done, no. and your vote will likely be discarded. Right. So you wanted to tell people about their choices. Right. And the State Board of Election was telling election officials, don't let voters know that they can vote regular or provisional. Just push them off provisional. They were and just that, automatically and putting them to provisional. And what I said in the post letter was, you ought to tell them to go home because, as we said, you, they live within a couple of miles because that's how precincts are set up, and get it. That way, their chances of their vote being counted goes from nil, which is what the election officer said, to 100%. Just go, get it, come back. And the other thing that I suggested is do up little cards. You know when you go to vote, they, they, once they've checked your identification, they give you a little square colored yeah, piece yeah. of paper, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I also suggested was, Get them a go to the head of the line pass because if you have stood in line for two hours sure. and then all of a sudden you are faced with the prospect of going home, coming back and getting at the end of the line, you're more likely to say, oh God, I'll just try the provisional. So right. give them away, they come back, they go home, they get it, they come back, they just walk straight and up. And that's a key thing there. Now, I bet if you asked a voter if there was an 80% chance of their provisional ballot not being cast, mm -hmm. They wouldn't cast it. That's right. They would go home. Because people are there to vote. Absolutely. That's why they Absolutely. want to be there. They're not there for, for any other reason. And no. again, uh, we wanted to be able to inform them of this choice. Now, I'm not pulling rank here, but I happen to be a member of the Alexandria Democratic. Ooh, good crew. Oh, good crew. Good crew. Good crew. Good crew. But let me tell you something that we're doing in my city that you may want to do in Fairfax. Uh, let, me, let me write this uh, down. <laughs> okay. No, we're, this, this is serious. Uh, it's happening for the first time this year. Election officials are going down the line. They're not waiting until you get to the front of the line. Love it. They're going down the line and checking and making sure people have the right ID and just saying, so what kind of ID do you have? Driver's license, fine. Utility bill, let me see it. It's got your address on it. That's fine. Student ID, Virginia, and fine. And they're doing that so that before you get to the front of the line, we have people, obviously, election officials inside, mm -hmm. but before you get to the front of the line, we'll know whether your ID is going to be okay so that if you do have the incorrect ID, you can go home without even needing the front of the line pass. Mark, that is great, and the ego of the FCDC chair is coming out. <laughs> we have such intense volunteers and voters. We're already doing that outside. Good. With volunteers. Outside. Terrific. We've deployed them Terrific. outside. Terrific. Absolutely. We agree now. You are brilliant. Great minds. Great minds. Great, 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 great minds think alike. Absolutely. Um, so I'm curious. The You had to go to court because if you had not gone to court, what the Virginia governor was telling 
the State Board of Elections to tell local officials to do what Stan, well, he, Stan here, you couldn't help voters. Here's what we found out that the confusion, because when we got to court, everyone was doing this. No, they, no, no, no. When we got to court, it was the to-dos. There was, there was confusion in the to-dos. Well, what's to-dos? What, what it's a list of... Things to do. As, a, as an election Checklist. officer. That's yeah. right. And when we were asking, well, where does that authority come from? No one could point it back to a specific law. The authority to shut up poll workers. Exactly. The poll, poll. It was happening in training. And there was, again, full disclosure, there was conflicting um, testimony on who said what, where, and when. We'll get past that. We'll resolve that. But today, the State Board of Election issued a clarification announcement. Exactly what we had wanted, the, the court uh, uh, basically said yes. And today, SBE issued their clarification. Okay, so the clarification says what? Says, as an election uh, officer, you are able to advocate, help not impede the election process. Of course not. If there's a question, you can certainly uh, advocate to uh, have that person vote a ballot. And then you can actually say a ballot is preferable to a provisional ballot. Absolutely. Which, and, and it will be definitely counted versus And the important thing counted. is you can leave the uh, check-in poll book area because most of those discussions happen over at the chief's table, mm -hmm. which could be 70 feet away in some cases. So we wanted the ability to do what we've been all, doing all along for at least 10 years that I know of, is to get up and address the issues that they have. Now, I know that in our precincts uh, in Alexandria, there's going to be a, a voter protection attorney inside every precinct. Mm -hmm. I think Obama for America is supplying the attorneys. Yep. Uh, and so if you have difficulty, or most importantly, if someone tells you you don't have a right to vote, you can actually go to have someone on your side. You They're can, wearing you can, a big button. You can't miss it. Absolutely. Okay. So you can actually say, hey, you know, he told me I couldn't vote, but 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 this is my utility bill. It, it's fine, isn't it? And if it is fine, the lawyer will say it is, and he'll march right in, and he'll ensure you have the right to vote, or she will ensure you have the right to vote. And if it's not okay, he or she will tell you, well, let me tell you why it's not okay. It doesn't have this. And you don't have to worry about the election officials shrugging their shoulders and saying, I can't tell you the law. So that, that's a big advantage there. Yeah. And it's in every precinct in Northern Virginia. Everyone listening to our voice, we're going to have that, that so, attorney inside. So that may be the case for certain counties and cities. I think we got it in Alexandria. It, well, in Fairfax County, it depends on the precinct. Okay, so you may not have it in your precinct. Absolutely. So what happens if you go in and they tell you, sorry, your ID is not good enough? Well, what do you do? That's okay. And because, you're not in one of the precincts with the lawyer. Because with the FCDC... The Fairfax County Democratic Committee. As well as the FCRC, the Republican Committee. Fairfax County Republican Committee. They, we have collectively added and, and um, certified our election officer, officers. So there'll be people inside that know the rules. They okay. do it. By the way, Virginia, we have elections every year. That's true. Our folks know what they're Sometimes doing. Sometimes two, three times a year. Yeah, special <laughs> election, <laughs> town really election, like pr it. primaries. <laughs> oh, my God. It's great. Lo local officials. Right. Right. Yeah, there's, there's always an election. Okay. If you have a question about election procedures, maybe you've been prevented from voting, maybe you just want to help in the process, give me a call. 571-749-1166. we got two experts right here. And let us know what you think and whether or not the laws should protect people's right to vote. We'll be right back. Will you be prevented from voting in the November presidential election? Virginia enacted a new voter ID law in May. It expands the types of identification voters can bring to the polls. But if you don't bring one of them, you can only cast a provisional ballot. Then it gets harder because you must get your ID by noon on the third day after the election to your local election office for your vote to be valid. You can avoid that by bringing a current utility bill, a bank statement, a government check, or your paycheck, but each must have your printed name and address. You can also bring a valid employee photo ID, a driver's license, or a photo ID from the Department of Motor Vehicles. Virginia will play a major role in deciding the presidential election. Make sure your vote counts. Bạn sẽ bị ngăn cản không cho bỏ phiếu trong cuộc bầu cử tổng thống vào tháng 11 sắp tới không? Tiểu bang Virginia đã ban hành một số quy luật mới vào tháng 5 vừa qua, ảnh hưởng những chứng minh thư cần khi đi bầu. 
những quy luật này cho phép cử tri mang theo một trong những À, loại chứng minh thư khi đi bầu Nếu người đi bầu không có bất cứ những chứng minh thư nào Họ chỉ có thể bầu vào một phiếu tạm Vấn đề trở nên phức tạp hơn Khi cử tri phải đem một chứng minh thư đến văn phòng bỏ phiếu Trước trưa ngày thứ ba sau ngày bầu cử Để phiếu tạm thời được trở nên thực Cử tri có thể tránh trường hợp nêu trên xảy ra Bằng cách đem theo một trong những chứng minh thư sau đây Hoa đơn điện nước Báo cáo chương mục của ngân hàng Chi phiếu trả tiền của chính phủ, chi phiếu lương và điều kiện là có tên và địa chỉ của cử tri. Cử tri cũng có thể đem theo bằng lái xe, căn cước có hình do sở làm cấp hoặc à, chứng minh thư do sở giao thông tiểu bang cấp. Tiểu bang vừa trên nhà sẽ có là một vai trò rất quan trọng vào kết quả cuộc bầu cử tổng thống sắp tới. Quý vị phải biết chắc là phiếu của mình sẽ được hợp lệ. Again, the Inside Scoop, Virginia. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop, focusing on Virginia. We are here in Fairfax County, Virginia, the largest jurisdiction in the state that is the second most important state in the United States when it comes to the presidential election. You've probably heard the most important Ohio gets all the credit. But of the 50 states in D.C., right here in Virginia is the second most important state. Likely, the winner of Virginia will win the election. It's the Ohio backup, as it were. In fact, there's a lot of shenanigans going on in Ohio, some of which I'm going to share with you right now. Uh, the uh, Secretary of State, uh, Republican Secretary of State of Ohio, Secretary of State Husted, uh, tried a number of ways to keep people from voting in Ohio. One of the things he did is he tried to shut down early voting. There is a practice uh, that is largely going on in African-American churches, souls to the polls, they call it, where they all get up from their pew on Sunday and go and march down to vote. Well, Republicans knew that that would lead to a lot of Democratic votes. So Houston said, and it was an amazing comment, not that he thought it, but that he said it out loud, that we don't have to accommodate these African-Americans that want to vote. Hmm, we don't have to accommodate them. Not quite Jim Crow, but it's getting close. Uh, he argued that only military voters should be allowed to vote, and only certain military voters in certain counties, namely the white suburban uh, or, 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 or rural counties, should be allowed to vote. Uh, the Obama administration, the Justice Department went to court and said, hey, if one voter is allowed to vote, all voters should be allowed to vote, and that was upheld. They, another thing that Husted tried to do is he tried to argue that poll workers could throw away your ballots. 30,000 ballots were thrown away in Ohio in the, the uh, uh, last election because people voted in the wrong precinct. A lot of times in Ohio, they'll combine precincts uh, right next to each other, and then people vote at the wrong table. They're in the right place, but they'll vote at the wrong table. And the, the poll worker will make a mistake, as poll workers will do, the election officials will do, and through their error, not through the voter doing anything wrong, they'll make an error. Houston argued, an amazing argument, that if you don't make a mistake, but the poll worker makes a mistake, you should lose your right to vote. He took that one all the way up to the United States Supreme Court. And the US Supreme Court said, what do you mean the voter didn't make an error and loses their right to vote? That doesn't make any sense. So they're trying really hard in Ohio because it's such an important state. Let me tell you this. If the Democrats win Virginia, if President Obama wins the electoral votes in Virginia, we don't have to worry about Ohio. That will be enough, I believe, to put President Obama over the top and will be, uh, be what some call beyond the margin of cheating. You may recall that 2000 was decided by one state, the state of Florida. I don't think I have to remind you of that. And 2004 was also decided by one state, the state of Ohio, where you may remember they had uh, one polling machine in some African American neighborhoods and seven or eight polling machines in some rural Republican neighborhoods. There were 12 hour lines, people standing in the rain. A lot of people went home Guess what? George Bush was elected president. In 2008, Barack Obama won beyond the margin of cheating. He won in so many states that they couldn't hold one state over his head. He became president of the United States. It's my hope that not only Ohio goes for Obama, but Virginia too. But I'll tell you this, even if you're a Republican, even if you don't want Obama to win, even if you want Romney to win, maybe you don't believe a woman should have a choice of what to do with her own body. Maybe you believe that uh, we need more guns provided that anyone with a mental illness should be able to get any gun they want. That's a Republican position, that people with mental illnesses should be able to buy guns. Maybe you believe that. If you believe that, you're going to want to vote Romney. Whatever you want to vote, the point is 
that your vote should be cast and should be counted. And my guests today are working hard to make sure that whoever you vote for, your vote will be counted. Uh, they are Cesar Del Aguilar. He is the uh, chair of the Fairfax County Democratic Committee. And uh, Bettina Lawton, host of Inside Scoop Virginia. Uh, she is a communications chairman for the committee. Now, Bettina, you were telling me before the vote, it's not just a question of ID, but even the manner in which you vote. Uh, <laughs> Piece of paper right. versus electronic. One of the things that concerns me after Hurricane Sandy up in New York and New Jersey is that if you have an electronic voting machine and it's swamped or you have no power or the right. place is flooded, the voting machine doesn't work. That's exactly but right. But we've been electing since George Washington. We've been using a piece of paper That's and right. it seems to work just fine. It works fine and we prefer people to vote by paper because then there is an actual trail. A, a, we call you can it, manipulate a computer, but you can't manipulate how many right. pieces of paper go from one candidate exactly. to the other. Exactly. If you, if you show up to vote tomorrow in Virginia and you want to vote by paper and you say as you check in, I want a paper ballot, they have to give you a paper by ballot. By Virginia law? Yes. yes. And you take it over and you sit down at this little table and you mark it and there's an optical scan machine and you feed it in. It reads it, it counts it, and the ballot is preserved. Well, tell me this. Drops in a box. Are, are different precincts in Fairfax County voting differently? Are some ballots and some electronic? On election day, you have the choice of either one in every precinct. So every precinct will have both electronic yes. and paper? Now, most of the time, they will not offer you paper because, again, they think it slows things down. As opposed to just taking you over, you press a bunch of buttons, you hit the big vote button, and you're done. With a paper ballot, they got to give it to you. You go over to another table, you sit down, you mark it up, you got to take it to the machine. Well, let me but ask you do this. it that way. Why, why, and you're the chair of, of the entire county Democratic Committee. Why aren't we advocating in Virginia for everyone to vote by paper? Because here's my concern. Maybe if you vote by paper, your vote is counted. That's great. But still, you push little buttons on the machine, and suddenly, ooh, Romney has a thousand more votes than exist in this precinct. Your, your paper ballot could be overwhelmed by hacking a computer. Absolutely. Why can't we have full paper records in every jurisdiction in, in well, of Virginia? Well, first of all, we, we do have that option, but the voter the has option. to ask for it. Yes. But it's, it's up to the state, uh, the legislators, to pass those laws. And the legislators have been against that. Um, and uh, quite frankly, it's how do you quantify investing in voting machines today? So the voting machines are being $2 used. $2 billion dollars on agreed, this election. Agreed, How much is, uh, is, is, is voting machines that count Some of the ballots? voting machines wow, are million? 10, 10 or 15 years old. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing how in Fairfax County, we can't set aside however many dollars it takes to refurbish all the machines. But that's a different issue. I have issue. an idea. We tax all the political ads, 10%. And we use, Love it. And we use that money <laughs> Love to it. ensure the integrity of the voting well, process. I, I think we could have done that this year, absolutely. Okay, well, this is good. I'll give you plenty of ideas. Yes, There's always next year, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's right. find out Every year, year, every year we every could year. do that. So tell me this. So if someone comes in to vote, and a lot of times a voter may, and it may just be an, an unintentional error, or maybe an error of somebody else, go to the wrong precinct. Uh, listen, precincts change. Right. The lines change. Absolutely. The, it, sometimes the, the, the polling place changes. I can go to one polling place in my precinct, and they suddenly switch to someone else, and I go back to the old polling place. It could be a different precinct. Absolutely. That can be very, very confusing to voters. Yes, yes. If a voter is unsure which is his or her correct precinct, what does that voter do? First of all, do not vote a provisional ballot. Do not vote a provisional ballot. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice. First, let's get that out there. Don't do that. Um, find a, um, an individual uh, that you that can ask that question. That lawyer will be able to help you. That lawyer will help you, the election uh, officer, mm -hmm. someone outside. Get them to contact. And they should have a map, right, in that election? It's in the, oh, yeah, yeah. Most they should have a yeah. big map. I've seen them so that you can right. actually look and say, wait a minute, you know, my home is in this right. precinct. I should be able to yeah. vote here. Well, what you're going to see is there are now electronic poll books. You know, there were the old paper ones, and they'd flip back. I and remember those. Say, yeah. Levine, yeah. Levine, yeah. how do you spell that? Right, Where's right, your right, address? Right, right. They're now electronic. If, you're, if you go to the polls tomorrow and they don't have you in the yeah. book, well, they, what, what I do? they can look you up. Right. And say to you, oh, this is not your precinct. Here's your other precinct. Okay. Most precincts that were switched, where mm -hmm. you know the, when the lines were switched in mm -hmm. the last redistricting, most of them are not that far away from wherever you need to be voting. So if you, if they tell you you you're not supposed to vote here, say, well, where should I vote? Exactly. 
and they can and look and it what up. What if this sometimes? I mean, this happens to me when I'm calling toll-free numbers. You know, so so the person says, "Well, you go vote over here." Then I go to the second place. and says, "Oh, you're supposed to vote over here," and now you're stuck. Mm -hmm. How do you find out the true answer? Is well, there a number you, you can call? Do, what you should do tonight okay. is go to, you can Google it, Virginia Board of Elections. Okay. Yes. And there is a button. Where do you vote? And, you and put click in your, on your it. Address? You put on your name. You put in your address. Okay. And it will pop it back out and say to you, here's where you vote. Print it out. Print it out. If anyone challenges you, you can That's be right. like, uh-uh, here I, I vote right. here. I, I don't vote provisional. Right. Exactly. That's right. It's right here. And so you can check it in Virginia. Okay, but if I wait in line for an hour and a half, I'm not right. going to want to go home, print it out, and bring it back. Uh, if right. I need an advocate, I got that lawyer inside yes. the polling place. Yes. And I or you go. have the election officers that can uh, help. And most well. of them are just trying to absolutely, help you vote. Absolutely. The, most of them are reasonable yeah. people. Yeah. The most of them are not out to get you. Yeah. They're, they're just trying to help you vote. And yes. so appeal to them and say, well, I live in this place. Um, is this not the right place to vote? Right. And, and they'll tell you where else to go. Now, here's another issue. People move. This is a pretty fluid population. You know, people move within Northern Virginia. They move mm -hmm. from uh, Fairfax County to Alexandria, or Alexandria to Fairfax County, or they move from Richmond up, up here, or they move from another state. If you have moved recently, what are the rules? So again, it depends. Um, if you've moved and you've remained within the same congressional district, mm -hmm. that's different. Okay, still so I moved from Alexandria to Arlington or, or to- And you stay in, in the, the same in the eighth eighth congressional eighth. district. Then you're okay. You probably will be able to cast a ballot even if you go to- Where, the, my old place, my new place? Where do I cast? Well, that's the beauty. If, you, if you've moved and you've remained within the same congressional district, mm -hmm. That's okay. Either one? You can, they'll look you up, but yes, you'll be able to cast that, that ballot. Okay, but let's say they have me at my old address, and uh, I'm, and I'm at my new on. address, and I'm absolutely proper. I know that my new address is here, uh, but uh, maybe my driver's license still has my old address. Yeah, but where, where, where was the, did you change it through DM, uh, the Department of Motor Vehicles? Maybe they didn't pass it on to the, that's, the election That's officials. where a lot of the issues I mean, I did it. The DMV, everything's fine. I, why isn't there a poll book? They Systems don't have it right. Aren't perfect. These, well, they're these. not going to keep me from voting, are they? No, you would probably have to go back to the old precinct and vote there. And vote okay. there. Or I bet I could show a utility bill at the new precinct and vote there, right? That's where the judge. That's where you're going to be sent to a different table. <laughs> You're good. They're going to say cast a provisional, but you know what the answer is, right? No, I don't want to cast okay, a provisional. So we go over to I the want a real ballot. I don't, want, I don't, want, I don't want a, a second-class so ballot. So the chief, the assistant chief, and whatever officer And I there. show a utility bill, and I say, this is my name. This yeah. is my address. Right. Uh, you know, I had, that was my old address in your yeah. poll book. And that's and Here's the my utility bill. That's right. Here's my water bill. I live here. I've only lived here two months, but I live here, so clearly. So that's where you'll have a little huddle, the chief, the assistant chief, and, and some And you should be allowed to vote. Absolutely. And if you're not, you go talk to that lawyer. Yeah. And, they, and they help you out. Absolutely. All right. Well, that was a real life example. Say that, no that, to provisional ballots. That was good. Say, say no <laughs> to provisional ballots. All right, folks, this is your last chance. If you want to call in and join the discussion, if you have any question about voting, about what's allowed in Virginia, uh, one of the questions that, that I know many ask is, is a photo ID required? We're going to get that answer when we come back because it is required in some states, but it may surprise you. It's not that hard to vote in Virginia. You don't need that much. You just need to prove you are who you say you are. 571-749-1166. This is Mark Levine. We'll be right back right after this. Will you be prevented from voting in the November presidential election? Virginia enacted a new voter ID law in May. It expands the types of identification voters can bring to the polls. But if you don't bring one of them, you can only cast a provisional ballot. Then it gets harder because you must get your ID by noon on the third day after the election to your local election office for your vote to be valid. You can avoid that by bringing a current utility bill, a bank statement, a government check, or your paycheck, but each must have your printed name and address. You can also bring a valid employee photo ID, a driver's license, or a photo ID from the Department of Motor Vehicles. Virginia will play a major role in deciding the presidential election. Make sure your vote counts. Tagaunin Tetungyang Sangue, Yorubunes, Hujungan Pure Hingsagiwian, Soriga Chimbideshanayo. 
버지니아주는 지난 5월 유권자 신분 확인을 위한 새로운 법안을 제정했는데요. 이 법안은 기존에 비해 다양한 형태의 신분증을 사용할 수 있도록 했습니다. 하지만 신분증을 지참하지 않으시면 선거 당일 개표에 포함되지 않은 예비 투표용지밖에 사용하실 수 없습니다. 예비 투표를 유효하게 만들려면 반드시 선거 3일 뒤 정오까지 본인 지역구 선거사무실에 신분증을 제시하셔야 합니다. 이런 불편을 피하시려면 투표소에 나오실 때 다음 서류 중 하나를 꼭 지참하셔야 합니다. 가장 최근의 공공요금 청구서, 은행 명세서, 정부에서 발행한 수표, 이름과 주소가 명시된 월급 수표, 이 밖에도 운전면허증, 사진이 전부된 직원 신분증, 교통국에서 발행된 사진이 붙은 신분증을 사용하실 수 있습니다. 버지니아주는 이번 대통령 선거에서 가장 중요한 접전 지역 중 하나입니다. 여러분의 소중한 한 표를 꼭 행사해 주세요. And all too often, new citizens, naturalized citizens, are a little unsure about where they are. Maybe they've never voted before, and they don't know that it's really not that hard, and it shouldn't be that hard to vote. You're an American citizen. It should be easy to vote, not hard to vote. Now, I'm talking with Cesar Del Aguila. He is the chair of the Fairfax County Democratic uh, Committee, and Bettina Lawton, who is uh, the communications director of Fairfax County and also host of Inside Scoop Virginia. And We're trying to determine just the rules, the rules of the road. No matter who you vote for, what are the rules of the road? So let's start with the early morning. So polls open at 6 a.m. Yes. in Virginia. And if uh, passes an experience, you go to the polls at 6 a.m. on a four-year election year, there's already a line. That's right. That's right. There's already a line. But I'll tell you this, and I've, I've worked the polls for many years. If you come in at 6, you might, you'll probably be out by 6.15, 6.30. I mean, usually the, the earliest voters, they yeah. get out pretty quick. The busiest time is 7 to 9.30. That's right. when, boom, everybody comes. That's when the lines are longest. Well, right. you have to hope that's the case. Although back in 2008, people were lining up at 5.15. Right. Because when I got to my poll to set it up, because I'm also a precinct captain, when I got there at 5.15 in the morning, there were already people waiting. And so hopefully when people will have voted early this mm -hmm. year. Right. And so maybe the lines won't be as long. But if you're going to vote in the morning, be prepared to spend the time. And, and to do by it. law, your employer must let you spend that time. Right. You're supposed so to be able to get two hours off to vote. Okay. But if the line is three hours long, your employer should give you three hours or four hours to vote. Well, and, and if they, you. And, and you shouldn't have an issue. If they have an issue, you could call uh, one of these uh, election uh, attorneys and they, they can talk to your employer and say, hey, well, let, and, that, let, let them vote. And if you are showing up to vote at 6 in the morning mm -hmm. and you don't you need to be, be to work until 9 to begin with, go. then you're in good shape. But the dirty little secret about voting, and this is what I do, now I take off every, every certainly every two-year election day, I'm, I'm, it's my special day, and I, I don't, a lot of people don't work election day mm -hmm. uh, because I'm working at the polls. I'm being a precinct captain or a voter protection attorney. The dirty secret is if you vote between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., the, lines are, the right. lines are short. And actually, yeah. if you avoid the 12 to 1 hour, like 10 to noon or 1 to 3, right. yeah. that's 2.30 two, two in the afternoon, yeah. you walk you're in, good. you're out, you're you're out in 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. So uh, if you can manage to take off, even go to work on time, take a really early lunch or really late lunch, you're going to get in and get, get out pretty right. quickly. Yeah. And most people in Fairfax County, we have learned over the years, because of our traffic situation, will vote early because they can't get back they worry about it. We had one year, oh, yeah. there was an ice storm, and I remember people who got there five minutes after seven at night pounding on the window, and they were too late. Yeah, now that's another thing. So the polls close at 7 p.m. Exactly. If you're in line. If, if you get in line at 6.58 or 6.59 p.m., even if the line is around the corner, and even if you don't get in until 9 o'clock, right. you have an absolute right to vote. Absolutely. Right. So don't let them tell you, 
you know, you get a 659, you make yeah. you, you make clear that, that, that you're in good. But if you arrive at 705, as you said, you lose, right. you lose your right to vote. So go ahead, vote early, vote on your lunch period. Don't don't even don't even try to vote after 3:30 p.m. Just just go before that time, and then you know you're okay. Well, we'll, we'll still take you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll still That's be it. there. We'll if you haven't much. voted, no, right. no, 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 come and no. vote. Yeah. Try. Yeah. try, try, try to vote. Because I got there's something I don't know. I have a live voted sticker. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like I'm a good American. You know, I've done what I'm supposed to do. Uh, it's you know, people have fought and died for hundreds of years That's protecting right. this right it's what makes us different from dictatorships it's Absolutely. there's something really wonderful about being able to say to your leaders i chose you or even if i didn't choose you the majority of my fellow citizens chose you you were rightfully democratically lawfully ethically chosen you yeah. weren't just someone imposed upon us and it's really so little to ask of citizens you know, I mean, uh, we do jury duty and voting, and that, that's about it. We don't have to serve in the military anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not required. Uh, there's not that much that's required of us, but, but voting certainly is something. Um, one of the things that uh, is confusing some voters, many have made their choice for president. They made their choice for, for Senate. But there's two constitutional amendments on the ballot, right. and uh, they involve some very complex issues, eminent domain, and the other is uh, scheduling of the General Assembly right. session. Tell you what, we'll deal with the second one first just because I think it's easier. <laughs> the second one simply allows the General Assembly to meet at a more flexible time. Right. I know that uh, Adam Eben uh, used to complain about the fact that the first Monday in April when they were quite a visit was always seem to be on Passover. Mm -hmm. and, and he'd say, well, you know, why, do I have to, why do I have to go on Passover? This just allows them to move it a couple right. days. Right. Really, I don't think any party has any complaints. Yeah. You yeah. can vote yes on Amendment right. 2. Absolutely. Yes. But Amendment 1... The amendment sponsored by Ken Cuccinelli, our very controversial uh, Republican attorney general, attorney Republican general. attorney general, that one's much more controversial. Uh, tell us about Amendment 1. Amendment 1, a lot of people don't understand. It's considered, it's called the eminent domain uh, constitutional amendment. We already have laws, we already have something in the Constitution that says if the government is taking your property, they have to give you fair compensation. I got that right here. It's my yeah, and your little Constitution, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, I'll, I'll and, have it for you. And we have that, <laughs> and that's a right. What this does right. is it expands that right so that instead of do I have to actually take your whole property, instead I want to construct something near your property. I like, want say to put the, a sewage line underneath. Sewage line underneath. I or, want to put a subway that, at, when we're done getting the subway in, your business is going to be great, but it's going to be incredibly inconvenient while we're building it. Under the language of this amendment, the, the government would be required to compensate you while we're building the subway. And for my your understanding inconvenience. is there's actually even no limit on it. They could have to right. compensate you indefinitely. Indefinitely. So even if, we all know that if you live near a metro, that's a good spot to that's live. Your spot. property values go up, your mm -hmm. business values go up, everyone wants to live near a metro in the Washington that's metropolitan right. area. Most people. Uh, most people do. No. Most people do. <laughs> but building the metro may cause some, some hardship, but in the long run, as you say, property values increase. You could actually get, require the local government, which is in the busy frankly, increasing your property values, mm -hmm. to pay you while they're doing the metro because they're doing a metro underneath. Or even for something so so minor as a utility line. Right. Actually, say, even more minor. Oh. A parade. A parade? A parade. The government-sponsored mm -hmm. parades. We have in Vienna a Vienna Halloween parade. What do okay. we do? We close Main Street for that parade. So you had a business on Main Street, you yes. could sue and require other taxpayers to right. pay higher taxes to compensate you, even though the parade probably increased your business exactly. right, rather but than it decreasing is your business. Exactly. So I want to be very clear. You do have the right under the Constitution, because nobody can, can get rid of the right under the Constitution. You do have the right, which I will find in a second, uh, that says if the government takes your property, right. Uh, then they have to pay you for it, which uh -huh. is which is a good right that we all and support. And we all have that right right and now. And we have that right right now because, the, because it's right here in, in it's right here in the in the United States Constitution. Right. Uh, but they're asking for something more than that, different yes. from that. Right. We What's don't actually have to take your property. Okay. The concept of taking the property is you owned it, mm -hmm. now I own it, mm -hmm. or I the government own it and I gave it to a developer to develop for the common good. This is less than that. When I run that parade down Route 123, I haven't taken your, your business from you. You still have your business. Yeah. It's an impact. And so let's now fight. Let's now have more lawsuits. 
about how did I impact Just what we need, your, we need more lawsuits. More lawsuits <laughs> more for lawsuits. our governments to have to fund. So the Democratic position on question one, the constitutional amendment question one, is vote no. Is vote no, because I found it's right here in the Fifth Amendment. It says that no private property can be taken for public use without just compensation. So that right you have. It's right here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Constitution. Right. No state can take that away. If they take your property for public use, they got to compensate right. for you. And that's fine. But what they're saying with this amendment is not just take your property, but in any way inconvenient to you and whatsoever, you can make all these taxpayers pay for you. So your tax bills will go way up because some business owner says, oh, I don't know, there's a stop sign to, that's on my property. They put that stop sign and I own that, that well, piece it, of grass. It's not even that. My theory would be that certain people don't believe in raising taxes. So they'll cut education. I see. They'll cut services. I see. It's just, it's, a, 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 it's another euphemism. It's a red herring. So who decides how much somebody gets for a parade or for a stop sign on, uh, that happens to be useful because it tells cars to stop, but it's, it's within an inch of my property line mm -hmm. because we can't put it in the road because it's really hard to stick the, the damn sign in, right. in, in, right. in, in, in paper. Right. And under this constitutional amendment, the businesses will have greater leverage. So right. they can just sue yes. the city constantly. Yes. For every stop yes. sign, right. every traffic light, right. every, every utility line, every, every sewage line, and there's a fire hydrant. Oh, that fire hydrant, that's on the edge of my property. You, you, have, you would have, under this constitutional amendment, a much greater ability to block legitimate projects, legitimate community right. endeavors for yeah, no, no good if reason. If they're going to take your property, that's one thing. That's but right. if they're going to put a stop sign or a fire hydrant right. or a utility line over right. it, you right. shouldn't be able to extort the city because, after all, at the end of the day, we all have to pay for well, that. Well, it'll that's make right. it cost prohibitive to right. fund those projects. Or even to put a stop sign up. So, uh, I agree with you. We need to vote no on one. No. Mm -hmm. No on one, yes on two. Yes and two. yes for the bond. And yes for the bond. And yes for the bond. Right. Okay, so no on one, yes on two, yes on the rest. No on one, yes on the rest. Yes. There you go. Got it. All right, so, again, tomorrow is election day. Many of you have voted early. That's a good thing. We want to encourage people, uh, if you can vote early, I'd love to see, frankly, to have a two-week election period where everyone could leisurely come in. We wouldn't have these very long lines. Nice. You may have heard that in Florida, the lines were so long because the Republican Party of Florida decided to decrease early voting. They wanted to make it harder for people to vote. They said, voting's too easy. We need to make it harder. And the governor, Rick Scott, cut down the voting days from 14 to 8. What happened? What do you think happened? They had long lines. Lines so long last weekend that people waited six hours to vote. And finally, Floridians had to go to court to argue they should have a longer period of vote. Let's use this as an example. Let's recognize that there are a lot of American citizens and they all want to vote. Let's make voting easy and not hard. I would encourage not just Virginia, but all states, not only to have paper ballots, your votes can be counted, but to have long voting periods so that people can come in and vote. Frankly, the cost is a tiny fraction of what the candidates are spending on their very expensive campaigns. I want to thank Cesar thank you, sir. Aguilar Pleasure. and Bettina Love for coming here on the Inside Scoop. And whatever your views, whatever your political party, get out and vote tomorrow. It is your civic duty. This is Mark Levine.